This video will revolve around the concepts introduced of these two notable scientists in physics, Isaac Newton and René Descartes. Newton and Descartes conducted the experiment using a prism to explain the emergence of colors of light, where Descartes subscribed to the wave model and Newton subscribed to the particle model. Why do you think these two scientists have different observations and findings about the nature of light? René Descartes, a French mathematician which is very famous for his Cartesian plane, among others, also studied and explained the concept of refraction with the assumption that light is a wave. In one of his experiments, he produced a rainbow using a water-filled glass sphere and sunlight. He explained that refraction of light caused the formation of rainbows. Then, he studied the emergence of colors of light in prism. In his observation, he noted that the different colors of light are refracted at varying degrees, where he further noted that the red light refracted more than the violet light. From this observation, he explained the wave nature of light using the concept called plenum an invisible substance occupying all space not occupied by matter. Once again, I will repeat that. This plenum, according to him, occupies the free space that is not occupied by matter. He asserted that this plenum was made of small spherical particles that rotate with the same speed and that he thought light as a disturbance traveling through the plenum. Descartes noted that when these particles, the plenum, passed through the prism and encountered the slit on the edge, their rotational speed would change. The rainbow in the prism was produced because of these differences in rotational speed of plenum particles. I know that this is quite a concept. Again, the free spaces that matter cannot occupy is filled by rotating spherical particles Descartes called plenum. According to Descartes, when we pass plenum through a prism, it will change its speed as it passes through a slit on the edge of the prism. And this change of speed is the reason behind the colors produced as light goes out of prism, or the rainbow we see in the prism. Then came Isaac Newton who proposed the corpuscular theory of light, which briefly we can state as that light was composed of tiny particles called corpuscles that travel in a straight line and can travel through a vacuum. Like Descartes, he used prism in his experiment where he observed that the red light refracted the least while the violet light refracted the most. According to Newton, this difference in refraction of red and violet occurred due to the difference in the mass of the colors of light. What did he mean by that? Red light corpuscles are more massive, that is why they deflected least, while violet corpuscles are the least massive, that is why they deflected most. And that is the brief background of Newton's corpuscular theory. We can see from here that Newton did not support the idea of Descartes. Newton's argument against the wave model presented was the formation of shadow. According to Newton, shadows are either of the same size or larger than the object. So shadow must be produced by the stream of straight moving particles blocked by an object. If light is a wave, according to Newton, then it should be able to spread from all sides of the object, allowing the formation of a smaller shadow. After these contrasting claims of Descartes and Newton about the nature of light, several different experiments were conducted to support both claims. For example, we have Thomas Young who conducted this double slit experiment which demonstrated how light spreads from a narrow slit. Here, in this experiment, he showed that after a light passes through double slits, it would bend or diffract, right? Then, he noticed that on his screen, 
there are dark and bright areas or fringes, which he mentioned that the bright ones are caused by light interacting constructively, and the dark ones are caused by total destructive interference of light. This leads to Young's support of wave model because light as a wave would exhibit interference and diffraction, thereby refuting Newton's claim about shadows of light. Then came James Clerk Maxwell, which concluded that light is an electromagnetic wave or a wave created by the mutual <laughs> generation of electric and magnetic fields, enabling it to travel even without medium just like in vacuum. He calculated the speed of electromagnetic wave and it matched the known speed of light in vacuum, 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second. While James Clerk Maxwell's findings are proven true, this is still not resolved the issue whether light is a wave or a particle. In the latter part of the 19th century, Scientists observe that electrons are emitted when certain metals are exposed to light. This phenomenon was called the photoelectric effect. This phenomenon intrigued many scientists in this period because it cannot be answered by the classical wave theory, which light was considered as wave with continuous flow of energy. For example, the amount of energy necessary to free an electron from a photomaterial could be easily calculated. This directly contradicted the wave theory of light because, according to this, it would take an appreciable time for electromagnetic waves to supply the energy needed for an electron to be emitted. But it was observed that the electrons flow immediately upon being exposed to light. Finally, in 1905, Albert Einstein solved the problems of the photoelectric effect. He postulated that light was consisted of particles or packets of energy rather than waves. He coined the term photon to refer to such light particles. By considering light to be composed of photons, Einstein was able to explain the photoelectric effect. The time delay necessary to get enough energy to free an electron was not a problem when using the concepts of photons of energy. He mentioned that this photon could release an instantaneous amount of energy to release the electrons in a photomaterial. To help you understand this, here is an analogy. Let us say that we need to extinguish the fire which we can compare as releasing the electrons when a material is exposed to it. In classical wave theory, it says it needs a certain amount of time before it can energize, before it can release the electrons. This, we can compare it as a stream of water in a garden hose, which we need a certain amount of time to extinguish the fire. Then, here are particles of light Einstein called photons in packet or in bundle, which released an instantaneous amount of energy and therefore is analogous to a bucket full of water thrown on fire. This will distinguish the fire immediately compared to the garden hose and therefore, back to our analogy, will release the electrons at an instant once exposed to light. But even if Einstein had proven the particle nature of light, Still, scientists cannot explain why it also shows wave phenomenon such as diffraction and interference. This behavior is explained by assuming the wave nature of light, but it cannot be explained by the photon or particle concept. On the other hand, the photoelectric effect cannot be explained by invoking the wave nature of light. Hence, there is a confusing situation. Is light a wave or is it a particle? Scientists agree that light is both wave and particle, which we call the dual nature of light. It means that to explain various phenomena, light must be described sometimes as wave and sometimes as a particle. Our idea that something is either a wave or a particle breaks down here. 
light is not really a wave, nor it is a particle. It has characteristics of both. And we simply have no good single macroscopic analogy that fits this combination. This led scientists to use whichever model of light works in a specific type of experiment. In some models, the wave model does a job. In other, the particle model becomes handy. The dual nature of light has been around for, for almost a century now. It actually does an excellent job of explaining both known and newly discovered phenomena. But we can all agree that light's true nature is still puzzling. That is all for this module. Again, I am Gilmar de Castro and see you in the next video.